पुराने गाने पुराने दोस्त घर की यादें और इलायची चाय उबलते पानी में इलायची चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन टू हेलो एंड वेलकम टू टॉप गन आई एम यूर होस्ट शेन फिलिप टूडेज एपिसोड इज ट्रूली अमेजिंग the story of a man who cheated death in the Bombay blast of 1993. Sanjeev Agarwala is the director of strategy and business development for Al Hab Tour Group, a conglomerate with interests in construction, hospitality, and automotive, one of the leading business families in the United Arab Emirates. presented by Nokia powered by Audi There are some amazing success stories which for some reason remain uncelebrated On this episode of Rainbow Top Guns we've decided to show you one such story one that has many takeaways So watch on and get inspired have such a accomplished background I mean you've worked across India Africa the Middle East but it all started in Calcutta didn't it That's right Chen that's where I was born and that's where I did my primary education senior education and university But growing up with your parents what some of the key learnings you had or what was what were some of the big takeaways in childhood for you Uh one of the biggest takeaways you know was uh, simple living and high thinking mm. that's what was the fundamental philosophy what my parents that sort of a culture was inculcated with us right from the beginning number 2 was not to have greed and the persistence mm. if you like something have the ambition and be persistent mm. and it came both in some part from my father and some part from my mother You went to Saint Xavier's, is that right? That's correct. Saint Xavier's. I spent three years in Xavier's, which sort of laid the foundation for my years to come. And right into accounting, finance, right into the heavy stuff. Did you know you wanted to be a chartered accountant at an early age? Or? Uh, at an early age, I had a, my mind was uh, debating between two streams. One was science. I could have been a doctor, and accounting. and uh, somehow I, i i know deep down i could never be in a doctor because when i dissected a cockroach in the lab i knew like doesn't uh, it, sound so good it doesn't sound so good <laughs> so accounts was was my passion and that's when i went into chartered accountancy at that very early stage how did you get your first job where did you land it how did all of that start i was merit listed I came in one of the like top 16 in India. Wow. So that that's uh, out without, of how without many me, 16 out of how many? Uh half a million to be <laughs> more. Uh, India you know is a big country. So when you get a merit list on a chartered accountancy exam it's a big deal. But uh, that that made uh, you know it opened the doors for me at that age. Mm-hmm. I had a flood of offers and uh, I shortlisted two amongst the offers. One was a uh, government organization called IFCI mm-hmm. where I had a good position and I had a position with the subsidiary of British America Tobacco which is ITC in India so I chose to be in ITC mm-hmm. and that's when my love affair started with ITC with tax and and then I got into hotels while I was in ITC when I joined their uh, Sheraton franchise in Bombay Are 
I guess there was some pretty uh, epic uh, milestones that you went through at your career there. Yes, uh, I think nobody escapes the uh, excitement of Bombay. It's the Hollywood of India. A lot of action, good and bad, and every day is a buzzing day there. But uh, I, I must make mention of two events that uh, I went through live in Bombay. One was uh, I was working in the hotel. It was the Sirak Sheraton 400 room hotel. And we went through our labor strike where just, just off the cuff, all the staff walked out. And we were about 60, 80 managers who were left high and dry, 400 rooms, 60% occupancy, and all the staff just simply walked out and How said- How many we, staff was that? I would say not less than 700 staff. Whoa. And they just left. They said, sorry, we don't work anymore. So we, we, each one of us took two or three positions. I was handling the cash. I took over the front office cash, front office reception, night audit, and then managed to get some reinforcements from our other hotels and management trainees and managed the day. For, you know, and the hotel kept running till the strike was sorted out, which was nearly a month. And the second uh, interesting, but uh, in retrospect, not while it happened, was I was middle of the serial bomb blasts that took place in Bombay in March 93. You were in one of the bombs? I was in, in the hotel bombs. where one of the bombs took off. Uh, the, the blast ripped through the hotel. The debris fell not less than 15 meters away from me. And that's when I saw life and death. I, I would measure it in less than 10 meters. If I had been flexed 10 meters on my left, the debris would be on me. It was a, you know, born again situation. Very terrifying, but in retrospect, an adventure. When you say that was a born again uh, situation, did, it, did that actually change the way that you looked at life and how you really viewed yourself? Yes, of course. It makes you think that it's something that can happen in less than a second can change not your life, everyone's life around you. And not only for me, but for my staff, for the people around, the families, the guests, you know, everyone is an interconnected person. Mm -hmm. So that makes you think that, look, uh, uh, materiality, materiality is not everything. There is something much more than that. One has to live while he's there in his life. But when I went home, I was covered in suit and complete black with RDX combustion powder all over me because I was the first to run up to the floors you know, to check if there is any guests trapped or some staff trapped, because I was okay. But my instant reaction was to go and help others. And then I took a full video of that place for records, you know, for insurance claims, for police investigation, from criminal investigation. So it was quite a sight. It was quite a horrible. Unbelievable That, that can't come out of my memory even till now. So you're working in the heart of Bombay. Um, how do you end up in Dubai? How does the love affair with Dubai and the Middle East start? There was a transition point between Bombay and Dubai. That I had a job offer, a very interesting job offer in Kenya, in Nairobi. And uh, I took that offer after a lot of persuasion from the headhunter and uh, also induced by a part of my family that lives in Nairobi. I had a friend who used to work for me in Bombay and he had a job in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So he used to keep writing to me at that time, and I would, of course, respond to him. And once I was transiting from Nairobi to India on a holiday, I stopped back you know, in Dubai for a couple of days to see the beauty and the glitz and all these nice things about Dubai, because I'd never been in Dubai before. And I think that three day stop changed my entire outlook and said, well, if there's a place I have to be, it has to be in Dubai. So 25th June, my contract ended in Nairobi, and 26th June, I started working with the Hubtops. Well, little did you know that was the first step of a 15-year journey now. That's our first step of a 15-year journey now, and still going strong. That small chance meeting, that catalyst, who arranged that coffee is instrumental for me, for my life, where I am today. So I owe a lot to these two people in my life to bring me from where I was to where I am.
presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia for the best smartphone photography in low light. <laughs> for easy wireless charging. And for city lanes to explore the world around them. <laughs> Time to switch. Rainbow Top Gun Season 2 With great views of the Dubai Marina, one of the finest hotel properties in Dubai, the Habtour Grand Beach Resort and Spa is part of the responsibilities of Sanjeev Agarwala. Hello and welcome back to Top Guns. I'm here with Sanjeev Agarwala and we're at Habtour Grand Beach Resort and Spa. Sanjeev, I understand this is one of the flagship properties of Al Habtour Group. That's correct, Shane. This is a 446 room hotel, very busy, top occupancy, and I think it's the finest in Dubai. Can you tell us a little bit of how your skill sets have changed from when you started 15 years ago to now? Yes, it's an interesting journey, and this sort of teaches us how we should keep developing ourselves when we join and how we go along and take bigger responsibilities. When you are young, you must have the right attitude. You must have an attitude to learn, to absorb, to see and implement. As you go along, you have to develop much more skill sets, some soft, some hard. In soft, you need to develop your time management, your leadership skills, and in hard, like for example, I did my CPA when I was 40 years old, 10 years into the company. And above all, the one of the biggest things I would recommend when you grow bigger or larger in your role, is to develop the right networking. And that can come and be very, very helpful to achieve success. Another thing I learned from most successful people is that they are really passionate about giving something back to society. In Sanjeev Agarwala's case, it's through the imparting of knowledge to the youth, among other things. You know, like success and failures are like two sides of the coin. Mm. So, you know, one cannot have all successes or all failures. And uh, top of my mind, I recollect, you know, it was when I was doing a project in Beirut, we're building a big theme park, and we went into a very sophisticated software which controls the entire park. It was a property management system. And we went through all the negotiation, we signed the order, all the deliveries were made. And then we found out it just doesn't do the basic thing it has to do. Mm. It does all the fancy things, but doesn't do the billing. Mm. That was a day I had cold sweat. That was a shocker. It was a huge failure on my part. But then I recovered very quickly. You know, we had our action team sat, sit together. And with the good teamwork and good, you know, intelligence and creativity, we managed to sort that out and meet the deadlines and open the park on time. What have been some of your biggest achievements to date? Uh, top of my mind, Shane, one of my biggest achievements is the projects that I handled in Lebanon in Beirut. Right. You know, we spent hundreds of millions of dollars building two hotels, greenfield projects, one family theme, theme park, a housing complex. And the, why it's biggest for me and very dear to me is because I was involved from the groundbreaking till topping up until it's full operational running. And getting into an environment where I didn't know the language, I didn't know the people, I didn't know the rules, the taxation, uh, and it was a this very... This was 2003 as it well, was, right? uh, The first project was in 2000, 2001, and then the second projects and all of that started with 2003, 4, 5, and then I stayed on as assistant CEO in Lebanon and came back during the war with Israel and uh, Beirut. Uh, that was uh, another adventure. Uh, we can talk one day about it. We don't get past our challenges without a little help from our friends. Who's really been instrumental in your development and, pu and pushing you forward through all of this? 
You know, uh, uh, I would like to mention in, in the career there comes people who really bring you or act as an, a catalyst to bring you to the position you really are in today. But there are two people I really believe they are very important in the success of my career. When I moved in from Bombay, from India to Nairobi, that was a completely new environment, very challenging, very difficult, a lot of crime and all that. And that's where I, my uncle used to live in Nairobi. And he mentored me for three to four months. And he really made me stay back in Nairobi. And that was a stepping stone on a different level of my career. And then uh, I wasn't very satisfied there. And uh, I had a friend, a very junior accountant called Chawan. We went in Siroc together. And he helped me a chance meeting with the senior management in Haptur while I was transiting Dubai. And that was 96, somewhere in the middle. And later, six months later, I got a job offer from Haptur's in late 96, early 97. And that, that small chance meeting, that catalyst who arranged that coffee is instrumental for me, for my life, where I am today. So I owe a lot to these two people in my life to bring me from where I was to where I am. He has achieved a good fit in his career and I'm sure he will achieve many more with his ability and skill and his knowledge. You know, you've gone from controller to CFO, and that's a very interesting jump because a controller is a very tactical role and a CFO is a very strategic role. Yeah. And there's not necessarily anything to help you make that leap. And a lot of controllers don't ever make the jump. Can you talk a little bit about how you did that and how you made that move? Yes, you know, uh, as a controller, you, you have a big responsibility. When I was a controller in the hotels, you've got to look at all the controls, all the income that has been generated is properly recorded, all the expenditures are properly done, but you are still controlling the books. You are more a functional person than a businessman. However, then you, you start maturing, and then you have a choice. You could live a controller, you can become a good accountant, or you can start looking at that job that bus as a business. And when you start think, looking at a business, then you start to see, look, how can I improve? How can I grow? How can I go beyond the books and look around? How can I bring new things and uh, strategic alliances, partnerships, uh, grow in the region, grow internationally? And once your vision starts, there's just no limit. I've known Sanjeev for the last maybe over 12 years. Uh, and I learned a lot from him. He was a great manager in here before he moved out to the head office. That taught me a lot of things, a lot of things. I really miss him around here as well. I've been working with Mr. Sanjeev for 15 years now. I think it's over, over 15 years. He's the most considerate boss I've ever had. He is very kind hearted, although in the office he's very straight. He works very hard. Really, and he trusts you. Blur the line between work and play. When you do that, you have that passion. You enjoy, you start liking your work. So if somebody asks you, how many days in a week do you work? I say, none. How many days or weekends do you have? I say, seven. Presented by Nokia, powered by Audi. Supported by the intelligent SME. Official radio partner, Suno 1024 and Super 94.7 FM. Around the world, millions of people are switching to Nokia Lumia. For the best smartphone photography in low light. <laughs> for easy wireless charging. And for city lanes to explore the world around them. <laughs> Time to switch. एक ही उपाय है, एक कप कड़क चाय, उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर, चाय की पत्ती, चीनी, 
कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए गैस बंद कर दीजिए रेनबो इवेपरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन टू Sanjeev Group with the Hatur Group and our group at school. Sanjeev came and he educated himself with, with us. He learned a lot, but also after that he contributed a lot. He contributed of knowledge. He's an intelligent man, and he did a great job with us. And I, I personally depend on him a lot. Sanjeev, you've had an amazing career with Al Hub Tour Group over the last 15 years. Do you have any success mantras or guiding principles that have driven you through the years? Yes, I do, Shane. Uh, what I strongly believe that a person should try is to blur the line between work and play. When you do that, you have that passion. You know, you enjoy. You start liking your work. So, if somebody asks you how many days in a week do you work, I say none. How many days or weekends do you have? I say seven. You know that motivation and that uh, brings you that extra contribution into your performance. And believe me, everything fits well after that. All right. So if you love what you do, then you don't work a day in your you life. You don't work a day in your life. That's what the mantra should be. Whatever profession you are, whether you're in finance, whether you're in operations, whether you, even if you are a golfer and you like golf and you're a professional golf, you know, like they say, I like to play golf and I'm a coach. Similarly, even if you're on a desk job and if you like what you do, believe me, you'll contribute much better and then success follows through. That success is really critical you know, in having a professional, a strong professional career to have a really sound personal life. Is, is that true? Absolutely. That's very, very important. You know, uh, your personal life, if you have a disturbed personal life, it will carry forward into your work. So it's very important for anyone to have the right balance. You know, and I, I put the balance in a triangle. The first, you put yourself, where you have to be relaxed, you have to take care of yourself, make sure you're okay. Second is your family, where you have to have a good personal life, and third is the work. So if you balance these three, the triangle. The triangle. This But is a, what I say is, you know, the right balance, the right mix. And uh, as as right from the beginning, I had a very strong discipline. I would never carry work home. So if I have to finish work in the office. Even have to sit a couple of hours extra. Do that, but when you are at home, you have to give undivided and focused attention. Right. That brings in the wonders. So, and how did you meet your wife, which was the catalyst to start this whole thing off? For me, it was a very, uh, uh, I would say, <laughs> boring. But it was an arranged marriage. So, you know, my parents uh, found the right girl as what we have in our community. But uh, looking back, I think it was the right thing to happen because I, I believe the parents know the child better than the child himself. We've had an arranged marriage. His sister came to meet me first, and uh, then I met Sanjay's parents, and then finally he was uh, busy with the Sea Rock strike, so he couldn't come to Delhi. So I flew to Bombay. I went with my father to Bombay and met him there. And uh, we took it from there. Looking back, I've been now happily married 21 years, and uh, I have no moment of regret at all. Ah, okay. And uh, what what is your son doing? My son, Siddharth Siddharth Agarwala, he's an undergrad graduate. He uh, he's studying in the U.S. in the University of Virginia. And what's he studying? He's aspiring to be a business manager. He's studying finance. Okay. And how many other kids do you have? I have a daughter. She's uh, 12 years. And she's studying in Dubai. I enjoy watching movies with him, and then we have popcorn together with chopsticks. Oh uh, well, we went to Switzerland once. We went to an amazing chocolate shop over there. So my dad and I tried almost every chocolate over there, and we just had a, the most wonderful time.
My father has always pushed me to try new things and give them my best. Using that philosophy, I've picked up fencing here at UVA and it's working out very well for me. And for that success, I have nobody to thank but my father. He has a lot of time for the children. Whatever their needs, he always makes time for the children. And on the weekends, he's always available for us. During the week, he keeps a little busy, but uh, that's to be expected. So now your own son is about to enter the workforce in a few years, and you yourself, obviously, an accomplished uh, leader within uh, the community. What advice would you have for those uh, up-and-coming young executives who are joining the workforce today? Uh, you know, for the youngsters, I would say, don't be afraid of the truth. Always speak the truth. Don't be overwhelmed by your superiors or by your peers. If you know that what you're saying is correct, stand by it. In the short term, you might, you know, the situation could be volatile, but in the long run, this will pay off. It's very important to stand with the truth and stay with the truth. So believe in yourself, have the courage of your convictions, and always stand by the truth. Sanjeev Argoela, thank you so much for coming on Top Guns. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I hope you're enjoying the episodes thus far, but more importantly, I hope they're inspiring you. That's it for this week. This is your host, Shane Phillips, signing off. Something that can happen in less than a second can change not your life, everyone's life around you. And not only for me, but for my staff, for the people around, the families, the guests. You know, everyone is an interconnected person. And in a flash, that whole thing can change when somebody loses his life. So that makes you think that, look, uh, materiality is not everything. There is something much more than that. One has to live while he's there in his life.